So in the second part of the third unit on uh, working with files, where we're looking at metadata, we're going to uh, just look at how you would go and uh, work out the extent of where the metadata is and jump over that uh, to get on with reading the data. So uh, we're going to look for the, uh, ways in which we can read until we get to the end of a metadata marker and then hand over to some of the things we looked at in unit two to actually deal with uh, reading it. So actually the pattern we're going to use, we introduced in unit one, where we showed how you could read a file line by line by line um, and then either skip over lines or stop reading when you reach some line that you recognized. Um, and the code to go and do that looks a bit like this. So uh, we start off by importing NumPy and we're also going to import the CSV module because we're going to use that in a bit. And then we have our very standard by now with open uh, line. So we're opening the data file uh, in the with clause um, and we're opening it for reading and we're calling it my data. That's the name of the variable which holds that file in it. And now we have again a very standard by now for loop which we're going to use to iterate over each line in that data file. Um, and so we read each line into the variable line. Uh, we're then going to chop off the end of line markers and then we're going to check whether what's left is equal to um, square brackets data. Um, and if it is, we go to the break, that kicks us out of the for loop. Uh, and then still within the with uh, clause, so still with the open the file open, the next thing we're going to go and do is we need to go and read the line that's the column headers. And to go and do this, I'm going to use the CSV uh, reader that we introduced in the last unit, um, simply because it's a convenient way of dealing with the, the header in this case. They're separated by commas. And by using CSV reader, um, if I've got a, a header itself that has a, a quoted comma in it, it'll just get it right for me. Um, it doesn't in this particular case, but it, it, it still, it's still, it's nice and convenient. And so I just do next and then ask the next thing out of that CSV reader that's accessing that data file. And once we've done that, we're ready to start reading the data. And so I do a call to uh, NumPy gen from TXT um, in order to go and read that data. Um, and then that's going to read the data, and then we're going to be able to print out um, the column headers and also the, the shape of the data, the number of rows and the number of columns it's got. So um, I was saying inside that, it's the, um, inside the with statement, it's that for loop with the, once we've used the strip to get rid of the underline markers, it's line seven where we're doing the test to make sure that we've got the end of the metadata. And then as I said, line nine is where we're using the CSV module to read the headers. Uh, in this particular case, we don't have to use the CSV module. We could have just done it uh, by reading the next line in the file and doing uh, a strip and then a split on the commas. That would have worked equally well in this particular case. Um, and um, two things. So first of all, you have to make sure you're going to get that test for the end of the metadata correct. Because if that goes wrong, that for loop is just going to read the entirety of the file and you're going to have no data there. Uh, and that is not what you want to have happen. So it's very, very important in these things that you're careful about how you write that test to make sure you've identified the end of the metadata correctly. Um, the other thing just to point out is with that gen from TXT, you'll notice there was no skip header there. Um, and also I was actually not passing it the name of the file. I was passing it already the, the already open file. So this is a, a thing that you can do with gen from TXT. If it gets the rather than getting a string as its first argument, if it gets the name of an already, if it gets an already opened file um, uh, being passed into it, this is, ah, I've got a file, it's already open. I'll just carry on reading from where, from where that file had left off and it will go and work. Now, actually this didn't work um, in slightly older versions of NumPy. So before NumPy 1.14, um, this didn't actually work properly. Um, and uh, it would complain about uh, that Jenna from TXT wanted a bytes file. So if you see that happening, then it's fine. You can still deal with it. You just have to do it in a slightly different way for that section. And so you write code that looks a bit like this. So um, the, the significant differences here are in the for loop. So you see in that for loop, I'm not just iterating over the file, I'm using enumerate. And so what enumerate does is it will return uh, two things to us. It's going to return a number which counts up from zero and then the next whatever it is that I'm enumerating. So in this case it's going to return the line number 
and then the the next line as well. And so we do the stuff we usually do with the line. So we take the end of the line markers off and we then check whether it's the got the required string at the end of it. And if it does, we break out of it. Um, but at the same time, we're counting up this line number. Um, so the rest of it is, is, is fairly similar. We get the column names of the CSV. Uh, and then I'm going to create this variable called header lines. Um, now, this is happening outside the for loop. So at this point, line number stored the last line number that the enumerated said I had read, which is the one which had the data in it. So the number of header lines I need to pass to Jen from TXT is going to be one more than that, because I've read the next line afterwards already. And then one more again, because in Jen from TXT, skip header starts from one, but uh, the enumerate, the line number started at zero. So I have to add two to it. And then you'll see that the Jen from TXT line is all the way outside of the width. So at this point, we have closed this file. The file has now been closed down. And now we come back with uh, Jen from TXT and we reopen the file with the same name. And now we can pass it um, skip header and the number of lines of header that we've worked out you need to skip in order to get it up to the right place. So this is what you do if, if you've got an ver older version of NumPy that you're working with and it complains about uh, not about Jen from TXT only working with byte stream files. Um, uh, and this is the solution. Okay, so that's how you go about dealing with the most common cases where you have a some kind of marker in the data file that says you're going to um, need to go and uh, stop trying to read metadata at this point. If you do think you've got a, a situation where you have a fixed number of files, it's actually much simpler. All you need to go and do is set a for loop and then cause it to read uh, the file set so that number of times uh, to get your way through the metadata. Assuming, of course, it's at the start of the file. Um, if your um, metadata is at the end of the file, then you kind of have to do an inverse process. You have to read through all the files until you get to the and work out how many lines there are in the file and then work out, work backwards from there. So um, in this case, um, the code would look like this. It's the same um, with and open. But now we're just iterating over a range, in this case, for five lines. Um, so I'm just going to, that variable ix is going to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, but in fact, I'm not doing anything with ix at all. I'm, it, it, it's a redundant variable. Um, all I need to go and do is just cause that loop to run five times. And every time it runs, I call read line. And that was going to read a line. And I'm not even going to keep that line. I'm just throwing it away. Um, all I'm doing is just saying, okay, I've read that line, I've read the next line, I've read the next line. Um, and actually, you could equally easily, you could do next my data. That would also work just fine as well. Um, and then after that, it's back to the same, the same again. We can look at the column names, and then we can use gen from txt to read the rest of the data. Um, and uh, that's straightforward. So that's how you go about doing it um, if you need to go and read with just a fixed number of lines there as well.